Hello and welcome to fairbitfirm.com. My name is Joe Cortez, former international boxing referee. Well, last week we had referee Tony Weeks on the show with us, and I got a lot of positive uh, callbacks and uh, emails from individuals telling me that, uh, and just on the block, people saying that, you know, that they understood why the referee stopped the fight when he did. So that's why I wanted Tony Weeks to explain the process and the roles of a, of a referee while engaging himself in a fight of that magnitude and, you know, engaging himself to the point where, you know, he has to get in there to save the fighter from taking unnecessary punishment. And this is what we try to explain to all the referees and to the fans out there. The, the sport is a, is, a, is, a, is a tough sport as it is. You know, so we have to try to come in and, and intervene sometimes just to get in there to, to stop the fighter from getting hit with unnecessary punches. And this is what we don't want in boxing. We, like I said before, we've had so many ring deaths in the last 12 months. We don't want any more. I think Tony Weeks did a great job in stopping him when he did because the doctor had instructed him to hit him one more, he gets hit one more hard blow, you stop it immediately. And Tony Weeks was only doing his job. The fans don't understand that part of it, but that's why we go to seminars, and that's why we, we, we do our homework where, as referees to, to see when is the appropriate time to stop a fight. And again, you know, Alfredo Angulo was trying his best, he had a, a heart of a lion, and he really tried to, you know, but uh, he was just, he was just like a like a punching bag all night long, and we sure, like we said before, we don't want any more tragedies in boxing. Canelo Alvarez showed that he really is a champion, and now that was like an elimination bout. Now hopefully he'll fight the winner of the Cotto and Sergio Martinez fight. That's what the word out there is. Hopefully that that occurs. If it doesn't happen, you know what? Lara is, is waiting there. Lara is, uh, is another Cuban fighter who is great, and he's uh, has great potential. He was able to stop Angulo uh, last year, so I think Lara, if he can, if he can get a match with uh, with the winner of the Cotto Martinez fight, I guess Lara will be the next in line. But it's a business, and that is not a money fight. The money is with Cotto or Sergio Martinez. And that, that, that should be an interesting fight. So let's see what happens in the near future. Now, this past Saturday, down in Puerto Rico, we had uh, Danny Garcia versus Mauricio Herrera. And that was a very, very tough fight for Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia has been a champion for the last three, three and a half years, and has looked outstanding with all his fights that he's had. You know, beating some top-notch contenders out there. But Saturday night, there was something missing. I don't know if it was the 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 Jarosco gandules, the rice and the beans, and the chicken and the pork. Who knows what it was? But he wanted to show the fans that he was a true hearted Puerto Rican and wanted to show them what he had. Something happened. He must have left it in, in the baggage department at the airport because he sure didn't bring it to the fight with him. He didn't have it that night. He was taking some jabs. And he was waiting too long to get off. Something was not right with Danny Garcia. You know what? He got a, 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 a what you call a majority decision, but uh, it, it could have gone either way. A draw would have been fine. If Herrera would have gotten the decision, I don't think anybody would have protested. You look at the Angels, uh, uh, Garcia, the father, the trainer, you look at his face. At the end there, he, lo he looked like a... Uh, his son didn't do well. Maybe like his son, maybe didn't even win that fight. But you know what? I could have lived with a, with a draw. He got a decision. That was fine. But you know what? He goes back to the drawing board. I'd like to see him give Herrera a rematch. Look at the rematch again to see, you know, to prove to the world that he had an off night. But I'll tell you one thing. Me being an ex-fighter, I was watching and saying, what does he get on right now, right there with the jab? Get the jab, jab, combination. And he was just waiting. You can't do that, you know? So I'm sure a lot of people are saying, what, 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 what is he waiting for? You have to get off with that jab. That jab should be in the guy's face all night long, like Herrera did with him. Herrera had that jab in his face all night long, 
and made it difficult for him. He didn't look good. He didn't even look good in, in the last round, which was supposed to be a round that hopefully he would come out strong. It was Herrera who came out strong. And he really wanted to fight. He wanted to win. But it was one of those nights in boxing. And Danny Garcia got the decision. And uh, hopefully there'll be a rematch to shut everybody up to things that he lost. On the other card, a heavyweight, Dion Tay Wilder. Remember that name, Dion Tay Wilder. He's a heavyweight that punches with either hand, and he hit his opponent that night, Malik Scott. Malik Scott was a was a fighter that said, "Well, he's gonna give uh, Wilder a tough fight." And you know what? In the first round, Wilder hit him with a a jab. That thing was a a hook, and then a, a, a right that, that, that even, didn't even land. It was a, the first point that he hit him with the hook that put his, put his equilibrium out of whack, and Wilder was declared the winner, and uh, Scott got counted out at 10. He barely made it up at 10, and referee Roberto Ramirez Jr. Uh, wisely stopped the contest after he reached the count of 10, so uh, Wilder is a heavyweight, a U.S. fighter that uh, has the potential to maybe bring the heavyweight division championship back to the U.S. Let's see what happens there. On the undercard, it was a rematch. Juan Manuel Lopez versus Daniel Ponce de Leon. And that was a, a repeat of the first fight that back in 2008, uh, Lopez knocked out Ponce de Leon in the, uh, in the first round. And uh, this time, Wamba got knocked down himself in the second round. And then Ponce de Leon knocked him down. I'll take it back. Wamba got knocked down in the, second, in the second round. And then Ponce de Leon got knocked down twice in the second round. And that's when the referee wisely stopped the contest. Uh, Ponce de Leon got hit pretty hard the way he went back with that devastating punch that Wama had. Wama and Ponce de Leon, Wama Lopez and Ponce de Leon, both wanted to win this fight so bad because they had to redeem themselves to get themselves back in a, in a position to be uh, challenging for a world title. And being that they both have gotten uh, stopped in recent fights, uh, Wama sure didn't look good against. Uh, uh, was it the uh, was Mickey Garcia that knocked him out? So here we are now with uh, uh, Juan Manuel Lopez uh, as he's trying to make some noise there again to get himself back into the picture. But let's see what happens. Let's see who he fights next. Next, and uh, uh, we wish the best for Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon will probably have a, one or two more fights to see if he has anything left. Maybe he still has a little spark in the old flash. Let's see what happens. We wish him the very best as well. Uh, in Philadelphia, uh, Zar Glazov, Glaskov. Zar Glaskov won a unanimous 12 round decision of, over former light heavyweight, cruiserweight champion Thomas Adamak. Thomas Adamak, as you will recall, lost uh, by knockout to Vitaly Klitschko. He had a couple of fights since then. He had never looked that good after he came back from that loss from uh, Klitschko. Uh, I think that Adam Mack has probably seen his better days getting up in age. So, uh, Zar Glaskov is a rising heavyweight from the Ukraine. And let's see what uh, he has to offer in the heavyweight division. Let's see, maybe they'll throw him against Wilder. And then from there, let's see who's going to be the next uh, uh, fight for the next uh, heavyweight championship of the world. And we wish him the very best. Now, you know, boxing is uh, really picking up. We got here April 12th in Las Vegas at the MGM Hotel. We have a rematch, Timothy Bradley versus uh, Manny Pacquiao. Now, this is going to be the rematch. As you all recall, the first fight was a controversial uh, uh, win for Timothy Bradley. And, um, you know, Manny Pacquiao came came off recently off a win out of, uh, from uh, Brandon Rios in Macau, China. He looked pretty decent, not 100% of the old Manny Pacquiao, but then again, you know, we're talking about the old, 
Matty Pacquiao is getting a little bit older now, so you really don't have as much as you do three or four years back. You know, but you know, that's not for everybody. You look at Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins, the older he gets, the younger he looks out there when he fights. So let's see uh, what happens uh, April 12th with uh, Pacquiao versus uh, Bradley. It should be an interesting match, and I'm sure they have a great undercard on that show. So uh, with that said, guys, thank you very much for listening and watching. We'll see you next week.